you're wasting all the time Another hour gone, did you hear the chime? You're wasting all the time Recorded for Thursday August 5th <laughs> 2021. <laughs> yes, that's right. Those melodious tones were there to inform you that this is Wasting All the Time, the improv comedy podcast with me, your host, Cody, for this blue episode for season two. We're goddamn good now, you better believe it. But, as those melodious tones also told you, I'm not doing this by myself, even though you're probably pretty impressed with the sound of my voice. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's okay. It's extra medium. I have others who are really good. I'm, a, I'm, I'm okay. They are amazing. To my digital left, Mr. Patterson. Hello, it's me, Dave, with an excellent voice. <laughs> I'm very jealous, and someday I'm going to cut out his vocal cords and eat them. To his left, Jenga, or Jess, as we call it. Hello, my name is Jess, and I, too, can have a really cool, smooth voice, just like Dave. Yep. All right. Agreed. Jess is now on my list of vocal cords to eat. And to her digital left, John! Hi! I've got a good voice, too! <laughs> oh. John is, uh... John is with us. I just <laughs> spit my water out! We're gonna do an improv comedy podcast. <laughs> Everything we say, do, think, and mean is made up on the spot. So it's gonna be a little wacky. It's gonna be a little out there. It's gonna be divided up into sections or segments or shticks, Depending on how aggressively you want to label them. And the first one, ah, uh, well, the first one is mine, and it goes a little something like this. It's the, uh, well, you know what? I'm going to let you experience it for yourself. Welcome, Welcome to Cody's to Words of Wisdom. wisdom. Soak up the knowledge. Coherent and sedate is how you will feel when you try these new dinosaur-sized sleeping bags because you will get lost in them. You can't touch anybody for a thousand miles around you. You thought dinosaurs were normal-sized? You're <laughs> wrong. They are legendary-sized. Tyrannosaurus Rex, Terrible King? No, it means football-sized dingus. And you can't argue with that because it's science, and I got a mail-in certificate that says I'm a scientist, so if you try to fight me, I will microscope you, and before you know it, all of your cells will rupture, and the dinosaurs will eat you, and they'll think, Fuck, this guy's really squishy. It's because your cells have ruptured and you've turned into goo. And that's my secret move. How do you think my anime is coming <laughs> along so far? Maybe it's a little over the top, but I think if we add a little bit of believe in yourself ability, then we can get all the way to PBS. <laughs> hey. You thought dinosaurs were so. normal size? <laughs> 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 they are not. <laughs> I hope you learned something from that. Um, there's a lot of uh, several generations of wisdom contained within those words. <laughs> Highly edifying. So, yes. um, yeah, you know what? If some of you uh, want to get those words tattooed on you at some point, I'll sign it. So fucking knock yourself out. So that's it for that segment. Uh, I hope you got a little bit of a understanding of what's going on there. This next segment is a little bit more of a party game, if you know what I mean. Yes, indeed. It's called Fruit Words, and it goes like this. Upwards, downwards, forwards, backwards, I say we go Fruit Words. Yes, that's right. This is the world-famous, globe-spanning Fruit Words improv game, where back in the day, some of our ancestors used to draw cards made of smashed trees <laughs> but no longer we live in the future the shit's real there's an app developed by unexampled salt one of our most brilliant humans to ever walk the planet and we draw cards from that because we're advanced i'm gonna draw the cards we're gonna use them as a jumping off point for a scene and uh, you're gonna enjoy it so get ready Love here it. we go enharmonical demi Ooh. I knew our musicians would like that. Yes. Enharmonical? Enharmonical. 
of or pertaining to that one of the three kinds of musical scale, diatonic, chromatic, and harmonic, recognized by the ancient Greeks, which consisted of quarter tones and major thirds, which was regarded as the most accurate. Demi. C. Demi. I don't want to. We broke up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I don't like the rules. It's in the dictionary. You have to. I, I'm a little confused, I mean, though. Like, enharmonical? Couldn't you just say harmonical? Because enharmonic has a specific definition. Like, you have the enharmonic spelling. Like, B sharp and C flat. It's enharmonic. Mm -hmm. I did that on purpose. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> like, for reals, reals, D sharp and E flat are the same frequency. They make the same pitch. But the spelling is, is an enharmonic spelling. I don't actually know why. I just know that's what it is. <laughs> Harmonic being things that exist. Wait, what does Fuck, the why am I trying to explain this? I have two goddamn music scientists in the chat. Yeah, we're uh, we're having fun just <laughs> listening to you flail there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's on us. That's our bad. <laughs> and flail, I did. <laughs> yeah, Cody was roughly right. Well, there you go. What is the end? Answered. What does the end mean? Yeah, what does the N mean, guys? I, don't know. Uh, I think the linguist. N prefix. Uh, what is the N? Engage N. Uh, what does the N Envelope. prefix mean? Envelope means maybe with maybe, or contains or I don't know. So oh so. But yeah, because they're both the same thing. So like they're both the, okay. So they're both the same pitch, and uh -huh. that's why they're enharmonical. If the prefix N is kind of like saying with or included mm. let's go with that uh i don't know about the greek scale thing that cody was referencing is the dictionary i was just reading it yeah cody chose to say those words and now they're pulled them out of nothing yeah. and uh yeah the ether the enharmonic ether oh, okay, but how do you spell ether a-e-t-h-e-r but it's the a-e where they're squished together i approve all in okay in harmony. Very, oh, yeah, very Lovecraftian. Oh. Okay. Yeah. And two, word forming element meaning near, at, in, on, within. From Greek n, in. Cognate with Latin in from pi root n, in, and thus with n, typically assimilated to m before p, b, m, l, and r. Okay, everything that Jess said, <laughs> you ruined. <laughs> I did! I'm sorry! <laughs> He's not sorry. He's not, not even a little bit. Mm -mm. That requires oh, a no. conscience. <laughs> Someone find a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'd like to uh, order some movie tickets over the the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we don't get too many phone calls anymore. Um, yeah. yeah, let me. Uh, geez, okay. I want to get the. I want to get a ticket for the fast movie. Oh, the, the fast and furious <laughs> movie. Yeah, the, uh, nine, I think. Uh, yeah, not a problem. Uh, yeah, how did you find out oh. uh, that you know we were showing this movie? Did you did you look it up in a newspaper too? Yeah, I looked it up in the paper. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Hey, uh, sorry, yeah. kind of personal question. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Your name isn't Demi by any chance, is it? It, it is. I'm sorry. Do I know you? Oh wow. I think so. I, I know a Demi that sounds just like you. It's either you uh, or a different one. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> <are> you? Did <laughs> you go? Did you go to Albert's Elementary School? I did. Yeah. <gasps> okay. Uh, did you have Mr. Spencer for? Yeah, but for, he's the for, one that had the weird uh, mustache. But he would always like he'd like yes. when he was talking about uh, science. You are, Demi. Wow. How you doing? It's been so long. I'm, I still don't know who I'm... you are. <laughs> oh, uh, my name's Luke. Luke. You know, Luke used to sit in the back. Had the, the inhaler. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, 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 I answered some questions uh -huh. before. Uh, cause, cause Mr. Spencer thought I fell asleep. Right. Right. Uh, 
Luke. <laughs> Luke Donaldson. Nikki Mr. Spence. Nikki oh, what? Okay. Hey. People still Nick? call you that. I didn't know that they did. Oh yeah. Everybody calls you Mickey D. Oh. I mean you've got the bright red what? hair. <laughs> Your favorite color was yellow. Are, are, are you sure? Am I sure? Uh, 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 uh. That your favorite color was yellow? I mean, you always wore it. I don't remember. <laughs> are you sure? You might be thinking of someone else. This just sounds like me. Uh, no, I, you know. Wait, are you saying that you're not? I'm Luke <laughs> Richardson. <laughs> uh, Donaldson. McDonaldson. Yeah. I, okay. I, I, I just. I guess I just didn't know about that. Uh, hair, right? yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you wearing a yellow yeah. shirt right now? Well, now I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh. Yeah, t I saw <laughs> in the uh, yeah in the paper. I saw in the paper and For yeah. This one ticket. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh no! <laughs> the horror, what the pain. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <sighs> That was that was fantastic. <laughs> There's so much depth to that, and it all hurts so much. <laughs> oh. That was a good segment. But you know what? I think we could do another one, and I think it will be even more next. Twitter shins. That's right. Twitter shins rapid balls. Top three tweets. The whole internet. Your ear balls. Our throat parts. Your brain. Oh shit. I know. It's really edgy. And because I'm really edgy. I push that too far. Tweet <laughs> number three. <laughs> From Cernovich. At Cernovich. How do we know this is true and not a stunt? Dave. Hey there, Cernovic Center Center, Center, Center <laughs> Divider. Guess what? I'm going to tell you that you can't know because there's no such thing as ultimate truth. <laughs> Dave's not so much of a mad scientist as he is a disgruntled philosopher. John, rebuttal. Uh, so now what we know of as truth is in fact a construct um, uh, that we um, all create uh, in our own uh, personal psyches. Uh, that being the case, <laughs> uh, one could say that there is no uh, universal truth. One could say that, but one <clears throat> would be wrong, of course, because there is one universal truth, and it is found in the works of the Mrs. Anne Rice, uh, her vampire <laughs> novels. Um, you know, if you read those, you will understand truth and beauty and poetry and, th frankly, things about, um, like, crime and blood that you wouldn't normally learn reading other <laughs> sorts of literature, but can come in handy in strange ways, uh, such as one time I was... Well, never mind. I'll tell that story later. <laughs> <laughs> An above-board philosopher with a taste for hemoglobin. Jess, counter rebuttal! Right, so... This may come as a shock to you, but uh, when a daredevil <laughs> does jump multiple cars on a motorcycle, <laughs> it is both true and a stunt, okay? So I just want you to know that, uh, that both answers are going to be right. And now you got you to gotta wrestle with that, buddy, because, <laughs> you know, I don't know what else I can provide to you. I'm not going to give you some stunt double daredevil 
counseling, okay? Like that that costs money. I ain't no psychotherapist. You know what? Find a group of y'all. Just get together and talk it all out. I don't know. Just make sure there's coffee and donuts. I think that's like a prerequisite. Jess helps those who help themselves, except you. <laughs> Tweet number two from duality slash tie at underscore duality. Oh, that's very clever. Dear Internet, do I keep my mustache? Jess. Well, I mean, <laughs> where are you going to put it? <laughs> that, that's my first question. Shit. I mean, you're going to put it in a drawer? You're going to put it in a bucket? You're going to, I don't know, you're going to put it on your mantle? Do you have a mantle? Do people even have mantles anymore? I think that's where they put their TVs now. But uh, I think, I think if you are ready, you are ready to let go of that mustache, you should, uh, you should Marie Kondo it. And I know that everybody is like come out against the minimalism <laughs> and how it's like a classist thing and everything. But you know what? I think sometimes... Sometimes it's good to let go, especially, especially if you've got um, negative emotions tied to that, that little ca- fuzzy caterpillar you got on your upper lip. You know, <laughs> let that caterpillar, if you will, put it into a cocoon and turn into a beautiful butterfly. Your face being the beautiful butterfly and the cocoon where the caterpillar just becomes an amogulous glove of goo is you <laughs> taking your mustache <laughs> off. And so I'm just, you know. Do you want to be a caterpillar? You want to be a butterfly? Jess, it sounds like self-help advice, but really, she's calling you ugly. <laughs> John, rebuttal. Uh, yeah. So the whole mustache thing, um, you know, you're going to want to look at the pros and the cons. Uh, the pros are that, um, you know, it's it's kind of cool, kind of mask uh, to have, you know, the, the facial hair going on. Uh, cons. Um, you know, they're, they just, you know, in the novels of Anne Rice, they just don't describe many of the vampires <laughs> as having much in the way of facial hair. And I just worry that you're setting yourself up for some kind of, you know, significant disappointment as a result of that. But, you know, at the end of the day, you do you, uh, star child. <laughs> John's vampire fetish is very specific and very exclusionary. Dave, counter rebuttal. Hey there, person on Twitter. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out there is no such thing as a mustache. <laughs> Only a beard hat. <laughs> <laughs> the truth hurts, but from Dave, it's uplifting. And the number one tweet on the entire internet ever tweeted ever. From Koros the Hunter at the Master Link 25. What? I'm the. Why are you here? No, bad pickle, Dave. Hey, Master Link, what up? Guess what? It turns out I'm not actually here. <laughs> I am not me, I am your demise. Dave, the deadliest non human pickle ever. John, rebuttal. Uh, so, um,. I'm going to have to go out on a limb here. This is outside of my normal uh, sort of expertise. I'm used to, <laughs> you know, it being vampires coming to get someone, not a pickle. Um, I'm assuming you're making a <laughs> reference to a certain cartoon I'm, I'm uh, you know, tangentially familiar with through memes. Um, and so I would say that um, you should uh, go back in time and uh, try to find um, the, the the fellow from from Back to the Future and kill him then before he's a pickle, <laughs> and then you will probably be all right. But you're probably but in the time that it took me to figure that whole plan out, the pickles probably killed you already. So uh, bad luck there. Um, and uh, whew, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> shit. <laughs> John actually wants people dead so there can be more vampires. <laughs> Sucks to be you. <laughs> Jess, counter rebuttal. Right. Uh, so it sounds like you're in a bit of a pickle because you're, you're saying <gasps> the pickle is right there. Boo! Um, <laughs> so 
I want to send my condolences to you and your cucumber family. Um, it's always hard. Ah. You know, it's always hard to see somebody from your, your bloodline come back as, a, a, as something that's been cured, if you will. <clears throat> uh, that said, can I eat your cousin? Because <clears throat> I love pickles. <clears throat> I'm going to say it. I'm a pickle lover. I've always been a pickle lover. I'm going to die a pickle lover. If I could, I would die with a pickle in my mouth. So, if you don't, if you don't have the gumption to to see your family member as a pickle, give him, give him over to me. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. You know, it's it's fine. You'll be you'll be great. You'll be great. You'll be great. Just severely testing my self control with jokes like pickle in my mouth. <laughs> This has been Twitter Rapid Balls. <laughs> My phrasing today has been terrible. <laughs> oh. There's that. There's the whole, that was so funny, and now my lap's wet. <laughs> I just can't. Yeah. I, I, I'm 0 for 2 on not making jokes. I, I, you're all welcome. <laughs> so that was, that was... Twitter's Rapid Balls. Yes, it was. You heard it here first. You're all welcome. Glad you caught yourself before you said that was fun. <laughs> I was actually about to say that was things what got sent oh, us. God. And it wasn't. <laughs> that was... <laughs> that happened. I anyway. I God damn it. I fucked. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> that was a good segment where we plumbed the depths of the god-awful shithole that is Twitter. But now we're going to turn to you, our listeners. Where we get actual good call up. A totally different We're, shithole. I was going to say we get actual good quality content from the internet from our listeners, but, you know, thanks for <laughs> Plum. Thanks for insulting our... <laughs> which is actually funny, because this is a listener-suggested scene from The Sanch. And now it's time for... Things What Got Sent Us! Oh, uh, yeah... Yeah, yeah, pickles, eh? We call them gherkins. (laughs) 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 That's right. This is the very popular things what got sent us. It's very British. You'll have to get used to it. (laughs) And this is a listener suggested scene from The Sanch. That's right, the one and only Sanch. He's here. This is it. This listener suggested scene. Patrons we are mad at, and why? (laughs) (laughs) I don't make the rules, I just break them. Oh no, what? (laughs) Okay, Uh, this Patreon thing is getting out of hand. I don't don't know if you have seen some of the things that have come in. Um, It's a little disturbing. Yeah, we we shouldn't have opened that P.O. box. No, you're absolutely right, Dave. I, I, I thought it was going to be funny jokes. I thought people were going to send me alcohol. Uh, but instead, I... Uh, fuck. They've been sending joke alcohol. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's insulting. It's horrifying. It says 350 proof on it. And I'm really excited. Right? Like you... Yeah. Why wouldn't you be? Yeah. Yeah. And I open it up and it's fucking water. <laughs> yeah. It's like, damn it. I thought this was going to be more than 100% alcohol. Yeah, you know me. I'm dumber than a sack of hammers. I'll believe anything on a label. <sighs> it's the squanch. We're going to have to... Uh... John, what was that thing you got the other day? Oh, the <laughs> sticky thing? Yeah. Yeah, it turned out it was uh, half a squirrel. Uh, oh. Oh. Yeah, that oh, one no. I think maybe we should actually call the police about. I don't know about you, but... Uh... <laughs> It was the sick act. It, it was so gross because it was like oh. it was like bisected top to tail. Yeah, who does that? Who does that? Yeah, yeah, and they I, even like went to the trouble of like attaching this little, like, I don't know. It was like build a bear style, like cutesy name tag that said like "Hello, my name is Siegfried." Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even going to mention that. No, yeah, that, that was like salt in the wound. Yeah. God damn. 
Siegfried the half a squirrel. Uh-huh. Jess, how are you holding up? Jess, I mean, are you, I you just, gonna... y'all got really cool stuff, you know? <laughs> you, got, <laughs> you got like really cool stuff. And all I got I mean, was a card. A thank you card. Oh, that's, 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 nice. that's all I got. I got a thank you oh. card. And oh. it just says, Sinister. Thanks for being a Jess. And you know what? Like, uh. that's <laughs> so boring. Like, I, like, <laughs> all they. Where's the creativity? Yeah, there's yeah. nothing there. There's nothing. I put my heart and I put my soul and I put my terrible phrasing mm. into this show. And all I get <laughs> is a car, is a thank you card that says, Thanks for being a Jess. Like, like, for I. For real. Wh- wow. Rude. You're here week after some weeks. and <laughs> Once in a while, you, I'm here when I feel like it. And you imbibe this energy yeah. that we can't. And it's yeah. just like. Yeah. I get a card. The but nerve. Enough imbibing just a for card. All of I, it's not even, it's not even like one of those cute cards with an illustration. Like it's one of those, it's one of those cards what? with like a photograph from like the 1980s, you know, like of just a field. It's like not even. Oh God. It's so generic. It's so generic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have to take action. This can't go unanswered. We can't just sit here and get weird shit in our P.O. box I got that we can't even drink. Too. What would you get? You did? Yeah. What? It I was mean, a, it was a stick off a tree. Uh-huh. And I wait. didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> did, wait, that, that stick? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one right there. Freaking bark and everything. Yeah, yeah, and it's got like those weird inscriptions in it and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it, it gives that. you makes your forearm tingle if you pick it up and wave it around. I, Son of a bitch! I can't believe the nerve of these people. D- dude, I think you got a magic wand. Oh, really? wait, Dave gets a magic I wand. Think, I think there's a magic wand. And oh, I get damn. apple juice and cow piss. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I got a card. You get a magic wand. Look, it's shooting sparks. It's shooting sparks at the end of it while you're waving it around. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a little. I. If you're yeah. a scientist, how did you not like jump on that like right away? I don't. I don't know how to use this. It didn't come with a manual. <laughs> <laughs> ah, how am I supposed to Google it? I. I don't, I, I don't know. So, <sighs> Stupid. Patrons. What a patrons. stupid. I hate these patrons. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I guess the only, we, the only, there's literally, clearly only one single option here left to any of us. Literally, clearly only. Oh. Literally, clearly only. That's called Hyperbole, Dave. <laughs> it's a literary device. Hyperbole. <laughs> <laughs> That we have to compete against our patrons in the Hyper Bowl. That's the only option. Thursday. This th- compete in the Hyper Bowl. This Thursday. 8 7 Central. <laughs> Tune in as these podcasters beat the asses of their patrons in the Hyper Bowl. <laughs> Hyper Bowl ass beating. Come for the laughs. Stay for the half a squirrel. <laughs> Before you write your angry letters, yes, we know it's hyperbole. Go away. Yes. <laughs> they don't know. I, and I sh- didn't want it. Oh. <laughs> 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 Fucking opposite of the one up game. What it was like, how banal and mundane can we make it? Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Siegfried. Siegfried. Oh, yeah. Deep, oh. deep, deep cut there. Yeah, that's, that's a callback oh. to middle school days or oh, high school, God. early high school. Crack Something snap. like that. Love it. <laughs> Oh, oh my God! That was that was so great. The Sanch, thank you so much for that email, for that listener suggestion. We took it, we ran with it, and you fled in terror. So, <laughs> it that it must have worked. Clearly, well, friends, 
I guess we should do the last segment of the day. What sayest thou? Yea, verily. Excellent. And also good in Flamio Hotman. This <laughs> is... <laughs> Yes, that is correct. Every single stinking week on the podcast, we choose an improv game. We try to play it. We usually do pretty well because we're all geniuses, except for me. I'm super genius. Fine, don't worry about it. It's a cool nickname. This is an improv game, um, uh, essentially of my own kind of semi-personal design. I don't have a name for it yet, so uh, hopefully y'all can help me think of one. Mm. Uh, for the moment, it's called. The game I made up that has to do with a book and a movie. Cool. That's the, okay. that's the name so far. The first two characters, uh, one player interviews the other, the author of a new book with a title suggested by the audience. Mm -hmm. After the interview runs for a minute, then the second two players, after like a time jump, are someone interviewing the director of the Smash oh, Hollywood shit. adaptation of the book. <laughs> oh. From page and, to uh, screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually Hopefully a good, lots of good name, page to screen. Yeah. Yes, page to screen. Dave's a genius. Dave. Only on some days. <laughs> You're a genius. Yeah, don't hog the genius hat. Yeah, Dave. It's comfy. I mean, yeah. It tickles my ears. <laughs> Does anybody have any particular desires of which part to be in which part? Yeah, I'll be one of them. I'll Ooh. be, I'll be sure? the one that Dave isn't. <laughs> gutsy, 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 John. Um, I'll be the one that uh, is neither Jess nor Dave. Mm -hmm. I think this is working yeah. out, actually. It's really good. Not, now I don't know who to be. <laughs> be yourself. So, I can't. I, ooh, I almost got deep. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. For the, the first segment... Dave will be the interviewer, and Jess will be the author for the second segment. I will be the interviewer, and John will be the director. Okay. Or maybe like lead actor or writer, whatever the fuck you want. This is a Hollywood, like big Hollywood type entity. Mm -hmm. Oh, big Hollywood. Oh, okay. Yes, Hollywood Not Grande. Indie. <laughs> Venti, even. <sighs> There's not 20 Hollywoods, John. Come on. <laughs> I took Italian in college. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. <laughs> I did too. Most of oh, it. No. <laughs> that's what happens. What happens? Hmm? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so happy. All right. Segment number one. Justin Dave, take it away whenever you're... Oh, we need a suggestion. <laughs> we need a suggestion from our audience. The title of the book. It's just any book title, whatever fucking genre or length or anything from our amazing, glorious, brilliant, attractive patrons, you too can be a patron at uh, patreon.com slash timewastepod for as little as one single dollar. And you too can get amazing, sensuous, glorious extra content. <laughs> and you can join our live channel where we record live. And you get to hear things that get cut out like this might be. Shit, now it's Schrodinger's edit. I don't know what to do. Hey there, everybody. Editor Dave here. Uh, well, we opened the box, the radioactive isotope had not decayed, and the cat was alive. Now, Cody, why don't you go ahead and tell us the name of this book? The Flying Yacht. Mm. That is the book, The Flying Yacht. <clears throat> Take it away. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh... You, you forgot my name already, didn't you? It's fine. <laughs> it's, you know. It, yeah, it, it was. Fine. It's fine. Uh... Uh, I thought it was on the card. Uh. Well, I'm sorry, introduce yourself. Uh, <laughs> Do you at least know the name of the book? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got that one. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, everybody, everybody listen up to the TV show. All right, yep, yeah, listen. All right, this is the author of uh, The Flying Yacht, and their name is? Uh, my name <clears throat> is Jane Smith. <laughs> Jane. Jane Smith. Smith. Fuck. Uh, yes. Uh, great. Great. Uh, so, uh, Jane, yeah. um, what, what would you say was the inspiration for the, the your book? <laughs> well, um, it is a 
it is a theorized biography of the Flying Dutchman. So <laughs> it's oh, very interesting. Did you read the book? Hmm. <laughs> I just, uh, I just figured I would check. <laughs> it was an, it was an excellent book. It's, it's, it's getting, uh, it's very well reviewed. Uh, people like yep. it. Um, yep. and you, so it's about a, a Dutch <laughs> man, the flying Dutchman flying. Wow. <laughs> the fly- so, he, so this, this guy's a, a pilot it's a, it's a of group. some description. It's a, it's a group and it deals with the, uh, uh-huh. they, they disappeared. Oh, okay. So, uh, like a one hit wonder kind of a situation or. <laughs> You know what? Sure. Yeah, exactly. One hit wonder. um, Flying Dutchman. Bermuda Triangle. A lot of lot of questions. And what what I really wanted to do, though, in this biography is not just look at the odd circumstances and the superstition of um, of all of it. What I really wanted to do was, you know, pull an Anne Rice and really get into (laughs) the emotions and the potential energy between mm. the flying dutchman and mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and explore those relations mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and and just mm-hmm. you know i'm sorry uh just to back up for what mm-hmm. one second yeah. you you said this is a uh, actually a biography uh, it's a creative biography yeah okay uh <laughs> great uh go ahead go ahead ann <laughs> oh no <laughs> Name is Jane. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, yes, M- Miss Rice, please. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's Smith. Uh, it's, how long it's Smith. did it? It's Jane Smith. I know your name. Do you? I do. You've got a name tag on, what which is... I thought was very odd for your own TV <laughs> show. <laughs> but you know, I need to sell th- this. This is a good book, and I'm just desperate to get on any. <laughs> local television station to talk about it you know uh-huh so. uh-huh yeah well you you're here on the albert clam show yep. and um <laughs> i don't know who i am no you're albert clam um it's on am your I? name tag and it's the giant sign next to us how long did it take you to write this book arthur <laughs> <laughs> jane jane it took me it took me about eight months eight months yeah is that all? Yeah. Just uh, long enough to have a, a premature baby. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> and I, I, even though I want to let you know that I took it all the way to the third trimester still, right? Uh, or I popped that out. That's all we ask. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really feel <laughs> like when you're writing a story, you have to incubate it, you know? So, so that's why. Speak I, on that. Yeah, speak. I am speaking on that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great gonna, we're I'm having speaking, a good time I'm speaking on that right so these these mu- musicians from the netherlands Not they're, uh, they were musicians they were pilots right these pilots mm-hmm. flew from the netherlands to the bermuda triangle <sighs> and then <laughs> now they're in a book yeah, you you got it, Glenn. Really, you did. But but uh, it's more than that, right? Everybody uh, knows that part. So that's why I want people to get the book so that they they can explore the inner relationships of all of them. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. So they they had relationships. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> okay, I ship them all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> some time in the future later. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on our show. We're so happy to have you here. Um, I mean, being a world-class director, you must be very busy. Uh, So thank you so much. We're really, really happy you had the time to show up and talk to us today. Uh, Yeah, sure. Sure. Love to be here. Love (laughs) to be here. (laughs) So so the flying yacht, your, your piece of resistance, the flying yacht, just topped box offices all over the world. Tell us a little bit about it. What what spoke to you from this source material to end up turning this into a blockbuster? Yeah, so it's uh, based on a on a on an ancient folk tale. Uh, no mm-hmm. one really knows uh, who authored it. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, no. but it's uh, it's um, about 
you know, like there's this craziness about like the Bermuda Triangle and getting mm-hmm. lost there. And I just felt like what a great metaphor for, um, you know, the current state of ice hockey. And so what we have in this film <laughs> is we have a team of ice hockey players called the flying Dutchman who Brilliant. get, uh, who, who play a game in the Bermuda triangle, but then they disappear to an alternate um, plane of existence where they have to play for their lives against the real flying Dutchman, uh, who was a, a ship captain, um, and 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 they all die. Such a brilliant, edgy take on a coming of edge tale such as this. I I have to ask: Did you actually ever get your hands on? Any of the source material at all. I know from some of the extra features that we got to see beforehand, you talked about it being lost, and you talked about some things that might not have fit with your particular vision of the movie. How did that? Uh, how did that work out with you in production? You know, I read a novelization. I think it was by Anne Rice um, <laughs> at one point, and it was good. It was well. It was very competently written, but it sort of <laughs> it sort of dealt. Um, uh, you know, more surface level than I wanted. You know, it didn't have any fight <laughs> scenes for one thing. And I mm. felt like we really needed um, some, some fight scenes between the ghost of, of the flying Dutchman and his crew and the hockey team. And so we, we uh, inserted that in, I feel like it's, it's, it's like a rediscovery of, of the real original myth rather than an embellishment um you know, it's a rediscovery is is what i would call it um you know although we did copyright it it's it's <laughs> our intellectual property um well now that only makes sense considering the script is where the real work occurs all you have to do is read a book but then turning it into something that people can understand like a movie that's that's art. That's that's art, and that's what most of our viewers are really. Excited. Uh, God, that hurt to say out loud. Fucking Christ. That's what our viewers really wanted to see. Uh, and you know, thank you for bringing that to them. Uh, some of your critics have said that the the uh, the strip club scene was a bit out of touch with the message. How do you respond to that? Well, I respond to that by saying that um, that stripper is my wife. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, I'm not going to not have her in the movie. And so, you know, we, we added that in. It's another sort of rediscovery. You needed that, that moment where they go to the otherworldly strip club to see that it's a real, uh, you know, working universe. You know, there's stuff going on there besides phantom hockey games and, and fights with ghosts. There's a whole like sort of economy, which we see the underbelly of, of course, uh, when they go to the the strip club um, in the other dimension uh, where my wife works uh, as the character. She works at a completely different club in real life. But, you know, in the movie, it's this otherworldly one. So brave, so controversial. I really think that the Oscars are going to have a tough time deciding between that and the cat who killed me uh, at this year's ceremonies. Any, do you have any, any final messages, anything you'd like to share with our viewers of this honestly transcendent piece of art that they might not have gotten from the surface level viewing? Um, yes. I just want to give a quick shout out to, uh, to one of our fans. Um, you know, the movie's not even really all the way out yet in wide release, but we keep getting letters from this very sweet lady named Jane Smith. And, um, (laughs) and I just want to say that, you know, I really appreciate, um, all the letters. Um, I definitely read every one and, um, and, and yes, thank you for being, thank you for being a fan. Well, maybe someday, Jane Smith will make it into the industry herself. We can only hope. Maybe. Until, maybe. I don't actually read the letters. 
No, no, of course not. No one would expect you to. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, all your time with us today. Enjoy your trailer. Everybody enjoy the flying yacht. And remember, the 3D glasses are imperative to really get the full oomph of the movie. <laughs> oh, uh, oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I guess Thank that's you, why they Jess. call it acting. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. <laughs> Jess, yes, that yeah. was yes. Set all of that up so brilliantly. <laughs> My head cannon is that uh, Jane Smith is going to uh, is going to uh, make a lot of money off that lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a bit, just a bit. <laughs> the problem is, is the money's not going to go to her because it's going to be written with the wrong name or something. Oh, no. (laughs) No, you sent me the check, but it's got the wrong name on the two lines. (laughs) (laughs) Why would you think I'm Anne Rice? (laughs) 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 Oh, God. Well, that is going to wrap it up for our fantastic little podcast today. Thank you so much for hanging out. We hope you had an excellent time. I know we did. I know very much that I did. This has been absolutely phenomenal. If you really liked it, if something about this really uh, tickled your fancy, head on over to wastingallthetime.com slash contact and uh, let us know about it. Give us a little feedback. Say, uh, hey, this, this, um, this transcended me to a new plane of reality and existence, and uh, it changed the way I view the world. And we'll be like, cool, thanks, here's a button. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, if uh, you detested it so significantly that you descended into the bowels of Hades itself, only to light yourself on fire, only to find that those flames could not even attempt to scratch the surface of the pure agony you felt or while having our voices into your ears, then go ahead and tweet that oh. to at Jay Hansen himself. It's very important. Make sure you use lots of uh, vulgarities, profanities, whatever, whatever tweets you fancy, and uh, we'll get right to that. Pure agony mm-hmm. Thursday! <laughs> <laughs> And if anything about this really just baked your biscuit with cheese on top, head on over to wastingallthetime.com slash vote. That's the big juices. That's where we compile all these at the end of the year. We do a fantastic big yearly episode with all of the scenes that get voted for, and it's fantastic. We have a great time. You can be part of that. You can be part of history. You could be on the internet. Um, I don't know. There's not much bigger of a prize than that, so do that. Thank you so much. We've had a great time. I have been Cody to my left. Dave to his left. Yes. To her left. John. And thank you again to all of our fantastic, amazing patrons. Thank you so much to Stephen for being in our live recording chat, giving us amazing suggestions. Really makes it a, a lot of fun. Until then, we'll see you next time. Stay cool. Memento Mori. Do all your cool shit. I don't know. Fucking do push ups. Push ups are good for you. And stop Whatever. sending shit to our P.O. box. <laughs> Yeah. You're gonna send a magic wand, send it to Jess. Jesus. Clearly. Anyway, take care. Clearly, we'll see you later. Bon voyage. Yeah, bon which means. But. Bye. Good night, folks. Congratulations. You've made it to the end of another episode of Wasting All the Time, a podcast. If you enjoyed this show, then please consider subscribing on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, or follow us on Spotify. If you really enjoyed the show, then head on over to patreon.com slash timewastepod and become a supporter of our time-wasting efforts. Now, that was a lot of things I just threw at you, so if you forget all that, just head on over to wastingallthetime.com, and there we have all the answers. Record. Magic. There we go. What is going on? We live in the future. Dave underscore 002. Yes.
No, it's like <laughs> Dave Rage. I don't know. I can't see anything on my. What is it? Oh, what is no. going on? I don't. Know. Okay, it looks like it's recording. Oh, let's let's confirm it, that. I see. Okay, so it's like the wave is going, <laughs> but like it's not. Usually, it keeps up with the wave, like my view thing does, and it's oh. not. Are you in? Sorry, are you in audition or audition. audacity? Okay, in the top right, there it looks like a little antenna or like a paddle. If you hover over it, it's like toggle playback auto scroll. Uh. Oh yeah. Okay. You just say audition, right? Oh. Okay, so I click that, and it looks really weird now. Oh, maybe because it's zoomed in or something. Shit. Oh, oh, it, it might be zoomed, zoomed in. in, or it okay. might be zoomed way out. All right, we're good now. Woo. <sighs> we did it. Okay. Huh. That oh. was like. That was like Apollo 13. <laughs> it was. <laughs>